How hard can it be to make a humanoid automaton drummer from 1206? Ah! Don't tell Sabrina! Don't tell her! I should have seen this one coming. Hey there, I'm Sabrina Cruz and this is History Remake with Sabrina. Today we're remaking Al Jazeera's drumming robot to figure out the power of sharing knowledge. Let's do this. Now you might be thinking, I've never heard of Al Jazeera or his drumming robot, and I don't blame you. Many history books have a way of forgetting that Europe wasn't the only place to exist before the 16th century. Let me change that and tell you about how one of the most prolific inventors during the Golden Age of Islam explored how we share knowledge. After the fall of the Roman Empire and Europe fell into its Dark Age, the Islamic world was flourishing in a period comparable to the Renaissance on steroids. Al Jazeera was an engineer working for the Artukid Sultan of Diyarbakir. This position afforded him the time and resources to experiment and follow in a tradition that permeated throughout the Golden Age of Islam, exploring curiosity and sharing knowledge. He was a prolific contributor to the Islamic world's advancement in the 13th century, and he captured them all in his Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices. Much of his work informed devices and processes still in use today. By thoroughly documenting his knowledge and its applications, Al Jazeera set himself apart from other inventors who obscured their research out of secrecy or inability to communicate clearly. And while their work was lost or misunderstood, Al Jazeera's inventions lived on, showcasing the lasting impact of sharing what you know. Anyway, drum roll please, because today we are remaking a design featured in Al Jazeera's Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, the Drummer Automaton, or Drumming Robot. Possibly one of the first humanoid robots in history, it was designed to entertain Al Jazeera's aristocratic patrons at parties, kind of like a medieval Chuck E. Cheese. And thanks to how he wrote stuff down for the first time on History Remade, we have instructions to follow. It was in his book of ingenious of knowledge of the, the, is it, the book. I can't even remember the name of the book. Okay, so how do we make it? With every build, we're gonna be focusing on exploring time-accurate techniques over time-accurate materials. So we're gonna be using things you could grab at your local hardware or craft store. For this build, we're gonna be using the following. Al Jazeera's drumming robot is basically a doll that does this. So remember that everything that we're gonna be doing in this video is to make this action possible. Specifically, that breaks down into four steps. Designing the drummer, making the motor, creating the cam, and making some music. Let's start with step one, designing the drummer. Al Jazeera's drummer is a doll made out of jointed wood, so we are going to just be using an artist model. In the build we're referencing, the drummer is kneeling, so I'm just gonna... Don't worry, I have a backup plan. We're gonna be using a, uh, an artist doll. <laughs> the other guy might not have knees anymore. It's fine, it's fine. We have this. This is the prototype that we used for when we were like testing out this build. He, he's a little bit jank, but it's fine. We're gonna just very carefully bend his knees this time. Anyway, uh, this won't be too visible because the drummer is going to be dressed in the traditional musician's garb of the time. It's primarily a tunic and hat, so let's make that. All right. So like the only rule that there was in the book about how the musician should be dressed besides being dressed in the usual musician's garb is that it needs to look nice. So am I worried? I've never made clothes before. <laughs> how does my shirt look? Should've really made clothes beforehand. Look at that, a sleeve! <laughs> the sleeve is a little long, that's fine, that's what tailoring is for. Interestingly, this drummer is part of a larger set called the, the Castle Water Clock. Uh, there would have been other musicians around this drummer, uh, like two cymbalists and two trumpeteers, I believe. But I just want y'all to focus on like the, the beautiful pragmatism of Al Jazeera's design without being weighed down by the mechanics of multiple dolls moving. Not bad! <laughs> I'd like to think that Al Jazeera would not mind the choice that I made because in the first section of his book, he says that individual parts may be omitted or added according to the place for which it is constructed. And the place that we are constructing this only has room for one drummer. How does he look? Thoughts? 
Okay, perfect. Then on that note, let's move on to step two. Making the motor. A motor's job is to convert some form or forms of energy into mechanical power. You might be familiar with the electric motor that uses the same principles we explored when we built Samuel Morse's telegraph, but they can be a lot simpler. The motor Al Jazeera used for his drummer robot was essentially a water wheel, similar to the ones we built for the Roman water mills of Barbagal, converting flowing water into a rotational movement. However, his water wheel was made out of spoons. Okay, so I need to put these things in a ring to make a water wheel. We're gonna be using a PVC coupling hub. I'm gonna use a rotary tool to cut out some holes in this, stab some spoons in, secure it all with hot glue, and hope that it works. Let's do that. That's one spoon. Let's just do this five more times. Anyway. I know spoons kind of seem like a very DIY solution, but honestly, Al Jazeera was a very DIY kind of person, just judging by the detail in his book of knowledge of ingenious mechanical devices. Like, the level of openness and precision that he held in his notes was pretty unheard of for his time and was only really a thing once patents came around centuries later. Melissa, do you think we should spray paint this to make it look nice? We still have all that spray paint from the telegraph bill. Yeah! There you go. The spray paint is in the bin, you have to go outside. Okay, I'm spray painting this because Sabrina asked me to, but also I kind of like spray painting things. And I want to contribute to this. <laughs> Don't tell Sabrina. Don't tell her. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. That's a promising thing to start with. Okay, so we're gonna put all the mechanical guts of this thing into a box. Al Jazeera would sometimes build his robots on boats to float around aristocratic parties, but we know how good I am with boats. So let's just quickly assemble this. Ta-da! That took a while. Hopefully not with movie magic though. Uh, remember these floor flanges? They're actually from the printing press that I built a few episodes back. Check it out if you haven't seen it. We love reducing, reusing, and recycling. Anyway, let's attach the wheel. Place that there. Oh. While we're waiting for the hot glue gun to get hot so I could reattach that spoon, let's talk about the water to power our water wheel. Uh, there would usually be a reservoir attached to the build, so I'm just gonna add a bit of a shelf with a tub that we can fill up with water. It's pretty unceremonious, but we just slit holes into the side of this container so that we could just slide it into place. Easier said than done. To get water from here to here, we're gonna actually mount a tipping bucket. This would have been carefully calibrated so that after 30 minutes, it would tip over, causing this wheel to spin and getting action from our drummer. It would allow the build to also double as a clock. However, we're gonna be focusing on simplicity, so this is just a plastic cup from a laundry detergent bottle. Uh, we're gonna mount it using metal braces. So I'm gonna be attaching it with some steel wire just so that we minimize the amount of friction. All right, so we want this bucket to tip, but it has a tendency to tip all the way upside down. So we're gonna weight it from below. And to do that, we're gonna be using some rocks I found on the street. So these rocks are actually two different sizes. This one's a little bit bigger. And that's because even though we're using the rocks so that the bucket naturally rests here, it'll eventually fill with water, causing it to tip forward. Once empty, we want it to return back to its starting position, and we could do that by increasing the weight on this end. So as you can see, if we have the bucket completely tipped over and we let go, and we give it a little bit of time, it'll return to its starting position. However, that starting position is tilting the wrong way. We will ultimately want the bucket going down here. So to fix that, I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick and just keep it nudged slightly this way so that when it tips, it'll get stopped by this stick. All right, are we ready to put some water in this? See if it works? Ah, it's dry enough, isn't it? Let's go. Oh, it's pouring. Oh! Let's move on to step three. 
creating the cam. A cam is a kind of gear that takes rotational movement and converts it to linear movement. Let me explain. I'm gonna be using foam board for this. Okay, so it all starts with a circle. It'll rotate about the usual center of rotation. The linear movement comes in with a mechanism called a follower. Al Jazeera usually made it from wire with one end attached to the drummer's arm and the other just resting, not securely attached on top of this cam. So remember, our goal is to get the drummer to do this, raise their arm and then lower it. So if we want to raise the drummer's arm, we draw in a lift. And then because we needed to drop down quickly, like he's drumming, uh, we just add a sharp drop. It kind of looks like a, like a little messed up snail. As this cam rotates, we get the linear movement of the drummer's arm going up and down. Uh, let me cut this out so that you guys can get a better idea. So let's imagine we have a follower constantly resting on top of this cam. As we rotate, it stays on that base circle. However, as we approach the lift, so does that follower, it lifts up. However, notice that this drop is coming up, then suddenly the follower should drop as well. That's basically how a cam works. Using this concept, we can design cams to make the drummer's arms move at different speeds and heights. This fact is why a few people consider Al Jazeera's dolls to be some of the earliest programmable robots in history. Obviously, very, very, very rudimentary programming, but it's an interesting thought. Now let's get these cams attached to our build. All right, so this cam will control the drummer's right arm, making it rise and fall once during each rotation. And this one will control the drummer's left arm, making it rise and fall two times during each rotation. We can get these things to spin by attaching them to the same rod that we attached our water wheel. It, this whole contraption would technically be called a camshaft, and while it might seem pretty simple, Al Jazeera's book contains one of the first ever recordings of it. And in that same book, he also invented the modern crankshaft. Now the wild thing is, is that these relatively simple seeming devices are actually fundamental to all vehicle engines today. There we go. The water will flow out of here, as we saw. It fills up our bucket, rotates this water wheel, and rotates our cams. So now in order to see that linear motion, let's attach some followers. I'm just gonna be using wire. Should make it a little fork shape at the end. I think that would be cute. Just so that it, rather than resting on top, we just clasp onto the sides like a hug. So ideally what we want is for these cams to be able to rotate smoothly and without much friction um, so that the follower isn't really interrupting it. Oh. We probably need to attach something that keeps the followers in place. I'm just gonna hot glue it into place. Hot glue has been the real MVP of this build. So as we saw before, this thing will have water in it. It'll fill up this bucket. This bucket will tip and this will spin. Now, we've seen these cams rotating already, but keep an eye on how they convert this rotation into linear movement. You'll see it most clearly uh, with where this wire bends. So let's pretend. Boom, there's so much water, and as it spins, fingers crossed, there we see it lift, and we see them drop. I can't believe this works. I wonder how fast we can go. On that note, let's move on to step four. Uh, wait a second. Question. Mm-hmm. You're right. Forgot to make the drums. <laughs> Rewind, we're on step 3.5. Making the drum and drumsticks. So he never really specified what kind of drum the drummer was using. So I think we just kind of need to make our own drum. I can't believe I forgot to make a drum. It's the drumming robot. Okay, I'll think about it overnight. I did not think about it overnight. Hello. Okay, we have our drum, we have our drumsticks. I think we're ready to move on to the final step. Step four, making some music. All right, so last thing I need to do is attach the arms. In the original design, uh, the arms were hollowed out and wire was fed through it, but our arms have magnetic endpoints, so we could just actually just stick it on because metal is also magnetic. This is science class now. Let me do a quick test spin. 
Let me explain what should happen, right? We have this pump pumping water into this upper reservoir. This upper reservoir empties out into this bucket. When this bucket is full enough, it should tip over, powering our water wheel, rotating it. That rotation will also spin our cams, and our cam should transfer that rotational movement into linear movement, making our drummer's arms drum. You following? Can we do something to make sure that we can hear this drummer drumming? I don't want another telegraph incident. All right, are we ready? ready. Plugging it in. Can we hear anything? Tap. And that is Al Jazeera's drumming robot remade. <laughs> Woo! There's a really beautiful simplicity to Al Jazeera's design, one I hope I conveyed with this build, because every component has a purpose. And this masterpiece is just one of many we can find in his book of knowledge of ingenious mechanical devices, a title that seems kind of strange in translation, but puts knowledge above all else. Because he didn't just invent or improve previous mechanical inventions, he wrote out exactly how he did it. And in doing so, he saved his work from the same fate faced by other old or ancient techniques like Damascus steel, Greek fire, or Stradivarius violins. His work wasn't lost or forgotten. Instead, we were able to remember it and build upon it, taking it from moving toy musicians to optimizing irrigation in the medieval Islamic world to powering our modern machines. That's a pretty far step away from forgotten and a powerful reminder to share what you know.